Hello, I'm William Kelly for the Kelly Truth Squad. We don't just annoy random politicians, no. Sometimes we annoy random celebrities, and tonight we're gonna do just that with one of my favorite celebrities, Colin Quinn. He's in town for uh, his own brand new show, Long Story Short, Colin Quinn, longstoryshort.com. Coming to a theater near you very, very soon. Johnny Carson once said, if you're on TV long enough, you will use every story that you've ever had. Well, I've never used the story of how Gary Meyer refuses to flush the toilet. Who knows? Maybe I'll use it tonight. You're going to have to stay tuned to find out. Also, will we give Colin Quinn this umbrella or a box of cigars? Once again, stay tuned if you want to know the answer to that and many other questions. Yeah. How are you How's doing? Going? Good to see Good to you, see man. You. Normally, uh, like I, I only see you on TV. Yes. So do you get that a lot? Do do people like just come up to you and go, "Wow, I normally only see you on TV." No. No, but no, nobody's ever actually done that. No, no, but they go. Uh, you know, they used to say, "You look, uh, you look tall." I thought you'd be taller, or shorter. <laughs> but now they go, "Hey, you look good. You lost weight because I lost weight." So that was the key. <laughs> <laughs> but um, well, very very cool. I, first of all, I did get to see the show, and oh, good. it is absolutely hilarious. Thanks. And smart. Thanks. And um, you know, you talk about uh, the Greeks and the Romans. You know, you kind of uh, uh, you're you're able to work that into your comedy. Very few people actually, very few comedians uh, can, uh, start with the Greeks and the Romans. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was the whole challenge was to try to make it funny and not too boring. You know. You know, and, and you know, it's funny because like people always, they always say the Greeks and the Romans, right. you know, because it's like they don't want to offend the Romans. Like they're afraid that legionnaires are going to come out and kill them. They don't, we don't really have to worry about the Romans anymore, do we? No, but in the politically correct world, you have to say everybody. You can't, you have to include everybody. First of all, everybody uh, loved our interview with you on uh, the Truth I Squad. Really, really you were the one adding some interesting insights. I forget what they were now, but <laughs> they were interesting at the time. I was like, that's really kind of deep. Thank I you. what you said, but it was good. Um, but we, um, yeah, we, we got a great response from Matt, and we, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we, we uh, uh, also posted that on the WashingtonTimes.com community section. I got to put that in there because well, they're uh, paying for something. Eh, something you don't like want to go into it, but something's <laughs> going on. I understand. <laughs> But, um, and uh, a real good friend of mine, uh, who, uh, who's also a Kelly, Chris Kelly, no relation uh, I know to that me. Name. I know Chris Kelly. Oh. Well, he's, I know several he, Chris Kellys, actually. There you go. Like three or four of them actually lived on my block. Yeah. You know, so it's like, you know, Chris Kelly, the mailman, Chris Kelly, the ma the milkman, Chris Kelly, the cop, Chris Kelly, the insurance guy, Chris <laughs> Kelly, the, you know, which Chris Kelly are you talking about? Yeah. It, it just so happens he owns a cigar shop in uh, Tessa Cigars. Oh, my God. He's a big fan of yours. And he, he nice. wanted me to give those to you. That's very nice. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Hell yeah. Kelly. <laughs> Everything really does just go back to the Greeks, doesn't it? Yeah, I feel like it does, you know. Some people want to take it earlier than the Greeks with the Sumerians, but really the Greeks are the ones that came up with all the, you know. A little callback to the, the Sumerians. Stuff, you know, uh, that yeah. was like a 3,000 year callback. Yeah, every callback is, <laughs> yes, it is. It's a small time. But yeah, I think it all does go back to the Greeks. They've got something for everything. You can't say anything when they go, yeah, we had, what's his name for that? Hippocrates. We had Archimedes for that. Yeah, we had Socrates, we had Sophocles, you know, they have somebody for everything. And they always boil, and they boiled it down into like one little sentence. You're right, they did, and it's too bad we don't, uh, you know, we couldn't live by that, but that's the whole point of the show, is that, you know, you you, you know everything, yet you know nothing, and each, I think we were talking about that too, our generation just messes up on their own anyway. Right. Even though, you know, if we all lived by those things, but everybody has different, you know, the mind it lets you twist whatever it is to justify whatever you want to do too. But I mean, I'm sure they discussed that too, and they have somebody, you know, who covered that too. Exactly. Probably Aristotle. He put everything. He was like the first OCD, probably, because you know, he put everything. He had to categorize everything. There you go. And uh, you know, and I'm sure that they probably were even like referencing back, you know, thousands of years to like uh, I don't know what would have, what were thousands of years pre right. pre Greek. But I guarantee you that they probably also referenced, you know, the Greek, you know, whoever came before yeah. them and said, hey, well, you know, it's all, you know, pretty much they, they said it all, but uh, we'll, we'll just go ahead and write it down again, just for yeah, the hell of it. Yeah, maybe you're right. I kind of was, you know, going to start with them, but you're right. <laughs> well, even when you think of all the kids' cartoons, 
they don't use frogs like they used frogs in like the 40s and 30s right. or ribbit but now it's like that's hacked so they use like we're gonna make a movie i mean they made a movie about a rat in a kitchen right it was a big hit ratatouille right it was about a rat in the kitchen it made me sick when i saw it do you think the greek but i mean do you think that the greeks what what, what would the greeks have said about something like that? they didn't have rats Rats, I believe, once again, you know, this is all, I believe that rats were the, the, uh, the, the, either the Huns or the, uh, G the Genghis Khan, the Mongol horde, they shot rats, on, rats were, they shot across that river between Asia and, uh, between like Russia and Europe, they shot rats, dead rats, onto the boats, and that's how the b rats got to Europe. I don't know about Southern Europe, yeah, but I mean, that's how rats, there were no rats in Europe before that. Isn't that weird? And that's how the plague started. Gee, I hope it's true. <laughs> there's got to be a joke in there somewhere. Yeah, there's got to be a whole routine. <laughs> well, I tried to do a whole thing with the Romans and plumbing, but it was just too involved, you know? <laughs> but I mean, yeah. You know, how people, before that, they would move every time it started to pile up. The waste would right. pile up. People would just move. And the Romans, the first one said, hey, let's move the waste. So I had a whole thing I was trying to work on that, you know? <laughs> And then wash your hands before you go back to work. Well, that's still in there, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, those, st those signs, they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> yes. Even to this very day. Well, I mean, it is kind of sick that we don't even have those signs. Sh those signs should be for everybody instead of just for employees. But apparently it's, you know, you can't tell everybody to wash their hands. That's, a, that, you know, that's infringing on your individual rights, isn't that's it? That's a sick? good point. You know, it's like, no, just our employees we're responsible for. You know, it's like I, it should say, hey, everybody, what are you doing? Yeah, everybody wash your hands. Yeah. I'm gonna, you know what? This could start like a whole, like a, like a civil disobedience. We could literally have people going around to like all the, all the uh, restrooms around the country, like putting, like crossing out employees and just putting everybody wash your hands. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty disgusting when you think of how many people don't even care. You know, nobody really knows anything. At the end of it all, no matter how hard you try, no matter how much you struggle, no right. matter, you know, it, what does it really mean if, if the very well, next... Well, nobody has the real, yeah, nobody has solutions to anything. I mean, the economy, everybody's just like, ah, hurricanes, everyone's like, ah, earthquake, we don't know what well, to do. Yeah. We yeah. don't know what to do during these times. We're, you know, we have a little bit of knowledge, but you can't really stop war. I mean, has war even slowed down since time began? I don't think so. No, speaking of... So I'm just saying, nobody knows what to do. Nobody's had to solve this. Um, now, here's the question, though. Is it that we don't know what to do, or we just, we know what to do, but we're not willing to do it? No, we don't know what to do. Because if I look at somebody from, let's say, like, you know, Al-Qaeda, they're convinced, just like I'm convinced, that they're 100% right, and I'm 100% right about what to do, about how to live. So I'm going to tell them, no, that's not how you live. And like, no, that's not how you live. And once you both want something, then you're going to clash. I mean, like, that, like I say, it all comes down to that one idiot out of 20 people that's just psychotic that nobody can get, you can never get them to agree with you on how to coexist in society because they think, no, no, this is it. And then people start to fight them, then other people have their own little conflicts in between. You know, they just put on earth. I don't know if they're put there by God or the devil or genetics or providence or upbringing, but there's one out of every 20 people that's going to, and then 20, I'm being very lenient when I say one in 20. Really, I think it's like one in 12. <laughs> but I think it's like two in 20. But either way, it's just the way it is. Who can stop them? Nobody. Then you're like, okay, I know how to stop them. We'll kill that each person. Then people go, wait a minute. That person, who are you to decide what the qualities are that makes that person you know, unworthy to live? And then that gets into that thing. And then anytime you do kill a person like that or get rid of them, somebody else that wasn't like that suddenly pops up and rises. That's the scary part. They come out of nowhere, and then they're that person. Right. Um, oh, CNN would cease to exist. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, like Fox News Channel, CNN, MSNBC, they're, they're, they wouldn't have anything to talk about if that other person didn't just all of a sudden oh, pop right, up. Oh, right, didn't pop know? up. That's right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We need uh, evil is what you're saying. Yeah, you may be right. Maybe, maybe um, so, so, but is it like trying to suppress evil? Are you, are, do you think that maybe that's actually causing the evil? What is? Like, uh, you, like to try to somehow eliminate evil people somehow also then makes us, yeah. does it make us evil? That's what some people think. I don't believe it, but yeah, I understand that, that school of thought. But if I lived in a society where like all of a sudden I decided I was going to devote my entire life to fighting evil, right. then 
wouldn't I be evil? Because then I would be going out like trying to like fight all these people that I perceive to be evil. And now I'm making a whole generation of new evil people. Like Dexter? <laughs> I don't even, I don't know who Dexter is. He's the serial killer that only kills serial killers. Wow, now how can, we, how can we get behind this, this Dexter? How can, we like, how can we like fund him? Can we give him a... Yeah, I mean, he's on, show, he's on Showtime. I think he gets funded, you know, decently <laughs> at Showtime, you know. But I mean, uh, yeah, so he's a guy that kills evil, and the big question is, I guess, is he evil or not evil? Damn. He kills evil people. You see? So, I mean, I agree with him, but, you know, a lot of people don't like that kind of thought. But who would be against that? Like, if, for example... A lot of people are against the death penalty. They're like, well, you know, the death penalty, that makes you as bad as them. But, you know, I don't believe that, but some people do. Did the Greeks have a death penalty? Do we know that? Um, Jesus. Because that would be very interesting, because they had it down. There's no doubt about it. The Greeks had it down. And we've just been screwing it up I, every... Oh, they, well, Socrates ate poison, but I don't know. They were going to kill him, I guess. They were going to. Right. He was condemned to death. Okay, but so in their own fashion, in their own style, they had some type of a death penalty. Sure, they wanted to kill Socrates, though, so what does that tell you? But that was like the tyrants. That was like the 12 tyrants or something. That was after the fall of the, wow. you know what I mean? Wasn't it like whoever took over was like the hardcore guys because yeah. they were like, okay, now we've got to be serious. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, the death of Socrates. I think it's because he, he they were going to kill him anyway. Right. He, he ate poison. So what does that tell you? What does that rat tell you right there? Before the rats existed. <laughs> it was human poison. So you, so you have like these great characters throughout history, the ones who were trying so hard to teach the right way, and they all end up getting, you know, killed in some way. Yeah. So what is that? So what, what would the Greeks say about that? Um, well, I don't know. I mean, you know, I haven't really read as much, you know. I mean, you'd have to read the whole. If I had read the whole annals of the Greeks, you'd do the whole show on the Greeks, really. Yeah. That's what I should do next, but I'm probably not going to, but it's. You know, I've tried to read a lot of the Greeks, but sometimes you get a headache from the way they write back in those days. It's very precise. I, I, that's why I like your yeah. translation better. My translation's a little easier, more palatable for people. You got it, Colin. Thanks, Thank you, brother. That's Pleasure, awesome. Pleasure, man. That's I great. truly appreciate it. it and um, and uh, we'll send you out all the links Thank and everything. Thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. And uh, have a great show tonight, okay? Thanks, brother. You got it. Thanks. Take care. Bro.